Hi folks, welcome back to the channel. Welcome if you haven't been before. My name is Watto and I wander about. This is Kim, say hello Kim. Hello Kim. Hello Kim, she wanders about as well. Today we're feeding our canal addiction again. Um, and we're just walking along the stretch of the Stroud Water Canal or Stroud Water Navigation to give it its correct name. I'm going to show you a few of the sites on the way. Let's go. interesting bridge just up here it's actually a skew railway bridge called skew because of the angle it goes across the canal it doesn't go straight across it goes on a skew now you know it once carried the stone house to Nailsworth branch of the Midland railway line there was five stations along its length in total passenger traffic ended about 1947 but freight trains continued right up to 1966, which is when the track was removed. This is what it looks like on top of the skew bridge. There's a footpath. I'm not sure where the footpath goes. Obviously, if you're local, you can tell me in the comments below. No doubt Paul from West Country Wanderings will know where this goes. If you do, you know what to do, mate. Let me know. You can see the construction of it said the old railway bridge long since used for that particular use there's also a lot of work going on at the moment dredging the canal trying to get it to a navigable state the guys here put a lot of work in to the upkeep Probably not going to see much on this camera down here, but Kim's up the other end doing her best to get pictures of graffiti. They're quite a cool little tunnel. Um, there is a uh, disabled access uh, place further up where they do give access to the canal to people with disabilities and help them with their sensory stimulation and things and I think the lights inside that tunnel is part of that and it's all very good, it helps to keep everybody inclusive everybody can enjoy the canal together Hey Kim Yes Why? 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 Mm -hmm. Is that boat called that? <laughs> I think I've mentioned in previous videos this is all part of a restored or a restoration project that's been going on and is still ongoing by the Cotswold Canals Trust to restore the Stroud Water Navigation and the Thames and Severn Canal and eventually link them all back up so they can run right away from the River Severn at the junction back that way behind me there is a video on that I'll put a link in the description right away through again to uh, Letchley which is where it would meet up with the Thames there's quite a bit of activity going on today not least the continuing dredging work going on to help make this canal a lot more navigable clear all the silt out of it hi there drifting along quite nicely actually literally <laughs> hello how are we doing what i have with me here a gentleman called keith from the cotswold boat mobility 
and he's going to tell you a little bit about what they do. Take people uh, on, on this boat here, which is electric, electrically driven. Ah, it's so, electric, right, so okay. So we have, it's not, not very noisy, and yep. it's got uh, no emissions, no, uh, no pollution. Perfect, perfect. And we take canoes as well. We've got a number of canoes which we can take oh, up to. Oh, they're adapted for, oh, right, okay, six yeah. Six people uh, on, in each canoe. Brilliant. And we can take up to eight people. This is designed to take a wheelchair. Yes. Uh, user. Yeah. yeah. We're having a, a That's ramp. That's good. And we go out every Monday and every Wednesday. Ah. How far do you go down? Down to, uh, sort of the, to ocean, the ocean, I suppose. Yeah. 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 We stop for tea and coffee and oh, <laughs> biscuits at the That's ocean. The yeah, brilliant. Really, really good. We want to try and expand, but we're uh, all. Always a bit short of volunteers. Yeah, so yeah. Obviously, that's it. Looking for new recruits. Oh, there we are. So, if anybody, <laughs> anybody in the area, we have got some viewers in the area that yes. will uh, come down. And, well, we uh, take all ages, all abilities. Good people with disabilities. Yep. Or the, learning difficulties. The bridge just down there is that part of the sensory experience, or is yes. that just yeah? Yes. That's what we thought. It's, it's really that's good. Right, yes. Yeah. What triggers it? Because I'm intrigued. Is it movement? Is it sound, or is it just a timer? <laughs> I, I didn't put it up there. So ah, I'm not right. Sure. Okay. So nobody knows that one. Oh, right. No, so it's but very it, good. it's solar powered. Yeah. I know that. Ah, right. But what triggers it? I, I'm not quite sure. It seems to be quite intermittent. Yeah, well, you, you sort of stand there and you think, <laughs> is it a time? Is it? Yeah. yeah. Well, it's very good. It all helps to. Yeah, it's nice for it the sensory adds, experience, adds, doesn't it? Brilliant. Adds, adds uh, something extra. Fantastic. Well, thank you very much for explaining a little bit to us, and thank you for doing what you do. No problem. Well, that was Keith. There, really, really good to talk to. Uh, very nice of him to spend a bit of time and just tell us what they do. A fantastic organisation and well done to the guys that volunteer and help provide a bit of sensory experience on the water for these people with various disabilities and needs. Well, all that work going on behind us there, all the dredging and we've just been told by Keith, again, font of information um, that they are dredging it out of the canal and they're putting it up onto the bank there drying it and sifting it and the aim is to sell it for like compost or some use for gardeners just to help raise money for the Cotswold Canal Trust which I think is brilliant that building over there if you can just about make it out used to be the pub the Anchor Inn I've explained before that on a lot of these bridges, we can get down here, you've got these indentations here, look. As you can see, they've been smoothed off. And that is caused by years and years of the canal barges being pulled along by horses, by rope. And the ropes consequently rub on the edge of the bridges there and cause those indentations. So next time you're out walking along a canal and you go under a bridge, have a look, see if you can see some. This section of the canal was called Ford's Wharf and was named after the owners of Royford Mill. Coal would have been unloaded here to power the mill in the production of flour, which was mostly sent to Bristol for distribution. Wheat for making the flour came from Newport in the west and Lechlade in the east. Some of the mill workers would have lived in the cottages we saw earlier on. Good example there of what actually comes out of the bottom of the canal once they dredge it. Thick clay in this area. All the way along is evidence of mills and such like. And we're actually in a little spot here where we've got the River Froome over there, just see over that hedge, and the Stradwater Canal there. The sluice gates on the river are opened and closed to regulate the level of water in both the canal and river. In the past, though, the failure of these sluices resulted in flooding of areas further downstream. This is one of the narrowest parts of the towpath where you've got the canal one side and the Froome and it's literally not much more than an arms fan across. You can almost dip one hand in one and one hand in the other.
made our way along to Royford and there is uh, a bit of an incline here so this is quite a famous double lock so two locks just to get up this little incline that's here at Royford the lock itself which is listed is part of the recent restoration and has some unusual features it's a double lock where the middle gate is shared by the upper and lower locks the cottage next to the lock is also listed and was built in the early days of the canal Again, this is more evidence of how they've restored this canal all the way along there. These lock gates behind me being part of the double lock have obviously had restoration. A lot of work, a lot of money and a lot of time going into the project. Lock keepers cottage there at the double lock. 1784 on the front, it's got brilliant. Just imagine it back in the day when they're this canal was an important lifeline between the River Thames and the River Severn. <laughs> Mid morning wash by the look of it. The observant among you will notice it's a different day <laughs> we got rained off badly rained off um, not prepared very well did we we didn't have the right well you didn't even have a coat so it is a different day and uh, let's carry on we're just getting a bit further up towards Stroud now you just see some of the newer build houses that have gone up alongside the canal I wish that they do the style of them a little bit more in keeping and then I suppose a lot of that is down to cost just come up as far as part of Stroud called Ebley and this indeed is Ebley Wharf one of many wharfs along here. Another example of what I call a levelling weir or a spill weir. Helps to regulate the level of the canal. You'll see these all the way along. Well, we've made it as far as Ebley Mill, which you can see behind me there. Or well, some of it behind me. Is actually now uh, where the Stroud Council offices are, amongst other businesses. As you can see, there's been a lot of money spent restoring all this area uh, and restoring the whole canal so far. Long may it continue. Do wonder whether it'll lose something of its charm once it's navigable right away through from the junction to up to Letchley where it'll pick up the seven. But I guess that is what it was originally built for. It is common for an otter to be spotted along this stretch. I'm just walking past Ebley Mill up towards Stroud a bit more and this is a brilliant little bit of engineering. It is actually a fish ladder, if you want to call it that, and it allows fish to mainly eels, I'm guessing, and perch and such like the more hardier of the fish to get from the canal, which is back there behind me, down the ladder to the room, and obviously the other way if they want to go that way. And I, for one, think it's really good that when they're restoring these places, they actually think about the wildlife, i.e., in this case, fish. and put things like this in. So well done, Cotswold Canals Trust. Right, we just popped in a little gate. It's by the side of the canal. 
and there's like a little nature pond and we're just having a little sit for two minutes plenty of birds about there's loads of birds up in that tree over there blue tits well i told you not to take your coat off The bridge behind me is called Hilly Orchard Bridge. Originally a swing bridge, it was rebuilt as a fixed low level footbridge back in the 1880s, believe it or not. And then has been taken down and rebuilt again when this housing project went in at its higher level footbridge. Now you can definitely see how far the dredging and work on the actual canal itself has got to there's pieces like this little stretch we're walking along now that's not been properly restored as of yet the Dudbridge crane is the last surviving crane on the Cotswold Canal it was built in 1854 in Preston by the John Stevenson foundry and supplied at a cost of 200 pounds Typical canal walk fashion, it's there and back. Difficult to do a circular walk on a canal. But um, we're just gonna stop for a little bit of refreshment. A little light refreshment, cheers. Cheers. <laughs> That's proper frothy. Mm. <laughs> well, suitably refreshed after being in there, we're gonna slowly make our way back towards where we parked, back down the canal. We thought we'd have a little look down here and have a take a little look at the old buildings the old mill what used to be Ebley Mill the building behind me is now used by Stroud District Council as their offices and all the other buildings around it are occupied by various other businesses but it's good to see the buildings still being used well for you can see all the lovely buildings behind us and evidence of the old mill there and it's as good a place as any just to sign off our little walk. Mm. Hope you found it nice and interesting and it was certainly relaxing, wasn't it? We enjoyed it. Oh, yeah. Don't forget if you have liked it, give us a big thumbs up. Click that subscribe button if you can. And we'll see you on the next one. Say goodbye, Kim. Bye, Kim. Goodbye, Kim. <laughs>